Sabbath greetings viewers. It is my pleasure to share the word of God with you. We are on lesson seven, which is entitled Christ's victory over death. Our memory text comes from Revelation chapter one, verse 17 and 18. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. He put his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead. But look, I am now alive forever and ever. I hold the key to death and to the place of death. We are praying. Our dear and loving Father who art above in heaven, we invite your presence at this moment. We pray, Lord, that you may send your Holy Spirit so that you may explain your way to us and allow us to understand what you wish us to learn. When all has been said and done, we pray, Lord, that our names be written in the book of the living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ's victory over death. In many times when we talk about death, we tend to fear when our loved ones die. We tend to fear. We are talking about victory over death. We look at Jesus when he was alive. Judas Cariot was instigated to betray him. Peter was convinced even to deny Jesus. If we look at these instances, it's like the devil is winning. In addition, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they opted to have Barnabas released and Jesus put to death. Finally, Jesus was hanged on the cross and he died. We see Joseph of Arimathea requesting for the body of Jesus so that he can bury him. Jesus was buried in a grave that was hood in a rock. And a big stone was put on the mouth of the sepulcher. If we look at the scene of Jesus being buried and a stone being rolled over the mouth of the tomb, the devil was excited together with his angels. The devil thought he was winning. But we want to thank the Lord for Jesus himself has believed in the one who kills both the flesh and the soul. He knew he was going to have victory when time comes. We see the tomb being secured. The chief priests and the Pharisees were afraid of Jesus even though he was dead. There was a seal that was put by the mouth of the sepulcher. None was supposed to get closer to the sepulcher. Soldiers were made to give a watch so that the disciples do not come and steal the body of Jesus. With all those security measures put in place, Jesus' victory over death would be made more noticeable. In whatever we do, all the obstacles that comes our way, just as Jesus had so many obstacles to make the resurrection inevitable, God will always attend to our obstacles and we will win Jesus' victory over death. He is in the tomb now. We see God himself. If we read from Romans chapter 8, Verse 11, the one who has the spirit to rise Jesus, if that spirit is in us, we will rise as well. God sent his angel to go down and roll the, the stone that, was in the, that had closed the sepulcher. He rolled the stone and sat on the stone. That shows victory. When Mary Magdalene, visited the tomb and with the other Mary. They were worried. 
who was going to roll the stone away from the sepulcher. But when they got there, God had attended to their request. The angel of the Lord had been sent to give victory to Jesus. We are the followers of Jesus. And God will always give us victory if we depend on him. Jesus depended fully on his father. He had no power to serve himself, but only God. And God is faithful. And he fulfilled that. When Jesus rose from the, from the dead, he was seen by many. The first people to witness Jesus' resurrection was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. They were worried. They were looking for Jesus. And yes, when they saw him, they were excited to go and spread the news. Jesus visited the disciples in the upper room in Jerusalem. They were enclosed there because they were afraid they might be killed as well. We see Jesus meeting with the disciples after his resurrection. When he got there, they were terrified. They were afraid. But Jesus told them that he was not the ghost. He showed them the mark of the nails that were on his hands. He even showed them the side where he was pierced. Still they did not believe until he requested for food to eat. He was given the roasted food. We all know that ghosts do not eat. And if, let's say, a ghost could come into the room and stay with you, will you be content? No one can stay with the ghost in the house and remain calm. Yes, Jesus had risen. Thomas, by then, when he visited the town, when he visited the disciples, he was not there. And when he was told that Jesus had risen, he did not believe. He made it clear that unless he put his, nail, his hand on the nails, Mark, then he will not believe. After a week, we see Jesus visiting the disciples once again. And this time, he asked Thomas to put his fingers on the nails, where there were some nails marks. And Thomas believed. And then Jesus said to Thomas, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Brethren, it's my, I invite you this uh, moment that may God increase our faith to believe without seeing. We should not walk by sight, but by faith. Jesus was also seen walking with the disciples on their way to a mouse. They could not recognize him. And when they go to a mouse, Jesus pretended as if he wanted to pass by. They invited him. And yes, we thank the Lord. After inviting him, their eyes were open and they recognized that they'd been walking with the Lord all along. I'm inviting you, listeners, that if God be with us, who can be against us? If we invite him in our lives, he will walk with us. Clopas and the other disciples could have just let Jesus go, but they invited him. Just as when he visited the disciples for the first time, they could not believe until he opened their mouth. We cannot do it on our own. We need God to open our spirituality so that we may understand the spiritual things. Yes, Jesus was seen also with the disciples at the shore of the Sea of Galilee when they were fishing. As they were fishing, he was part of them. He had even breakfast with them. This is evident enough that Jesus has risen. The resurrection of Jesus is the call to our faith as Christians. To those or to us who believe in Christ, if he has not risen, then 
our faith is futile. One may ask, yes, fine, Jesus is resurrected. Still, they wanted more evidence of Jesus' resurrection. We have seen that in spite of all the security measures that were put when he was buried, the soldiers keeping a watch and the seal that was sealed on the, on the sepulchre's mouth. Jesus rose. The power of God is amazing to rise even us. When Jesus rose, he rose as a human being. The glorified body of a human being was in him. He rose with many. We are told the earthquake was experienced and the rock split. We are told that the, the, the people who had died believing had their graves pop open and they rose with Jesus. This gives us hope. We have the prototype. The prototype of those who rise when Jesus comes to take us home. May the Lord help us to believe in him and to live according to his word. When we are talking about a prototype, we are talking about an individual with certain attributes of the, of the later time. When Jesus comes, we will rise to immortality. We will rise to die no more. We will rise to live with our Savior. God is our Savior. We will rise to be like Jesus. But when Jesus rose, he rose with the marks of the nails in his hands and the mark where he was pierced. We will only arise as new creatures. God will wash us of all our sins. The marks of our sins will never be seen. Allow me to conclude this way. When Jesus rose from the dead, the confirmation of his resurrection is real. He was seen by many. He even showed himself to people who were over 500 at once. We are invited to stay in Jesus' feet. That is why he says he has the key to death and the key to the place of death. If we believe in him, we are the partakers of the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless us as he, we stay in his word and that as he stays increasing our faith. We pray that we may read his word and believe him. When he said you resurrect in three days, yes, indeed, it happened so. If only we could read his word and believe it, stay on our knees, meditating and living with him all the time. May the Lord bless us. Amen. We are praying. Our dear and loving Father at above in heaven, thank you for your lesson. We pray, Lord, that you may increase our faith and believe that Jesus' resurrection meant our salvation. May you help us as we continue reading your word, that you may open our spiritual eyes so that we may see. We open our spiritual ears so that we may hear you and stay believing, knowing that when Jesus comes, we will rise and those who are dead will rise to meet with him in the sky. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.